What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my betting breakdown video for UFC 272. We have Colby Covington going against Jorge Masvidal. And we are back for another betting breakdown video, this time breaking down a very good card. UFC 272, phenomenal main event. I think the card as a whole is, is honestly pretty so solid. I've seen people crapping on it, but uh, I like this card a lot. And I have 11 bets, 8 of them being plus money. Of course, a lot of violence bets as well. Uh, just really looking forward to this card. I think it's going to be a great time, and I am liking a lot of my spots. So hopefully it's a good night. Hopefully everybody enjoys the fights as well, most importantly. Uh, before we get started, as always, if you guys can leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you are not already. It is much appreciated getting really close to 14K subs. I think we're like less than like 60 away. So if you are not subbed yet, please do me a huge favor. Hit the subscribe button. It would be awesome to get 14K subs by fight time. It's kind of a kind of a reach, but I think we could potentially do it here. And again, that'd be, a, that'd be awesome. So much appreciated. I do appreciate that a ton. But um, other than that, um, you can follow me on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers. Instagram, DFS by the numbers. I'll be posting my final picks there with the method. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up on there as well. Always a good chance to, uh, always always good to talk to you guys on there. And uh, yeah, I think that is about it. Me and Wheezy, a narco cop, Eric Betts fights going live one hour prior to the prelims with uh, best bet. Tune in there. Uh, I think the prelims start at six. We'll be going live at five. And uh, yeah, so it should be good. So that's about it, guys. And we will start with the video here. So we have the very first fight of the night. And we have Dustin Jacoby going against Mikel Olazechuk. And I don't have a ton of action on these prelims, but um, I do like Dustin Jacoby in this fight. I don't have a bet on this fight. Um, the line has came down a little bit. I just think that Dustin Jacoby you know, has more tools on the feet. I think when we're talking power, it does go in favor of Mikel Olazechuk. But, you know, Dustin Jacoby, very good leg kicks. He throws a ton of them. You know, probably that more volume uh, coming from the Jacoby side as well. And he's bigger. I think he's much bigger. I mean, height advantage, reach advantage. This guy's more of a natural light heavyweight where Mikel Olazechuk probably should be fighting at middleweight. I believe he's six foot, where uh, Jacoby's six foot three. I think size is going to matter here. I think output and cardio is going to matter. So I do favor Dustin Jacoby ever so slightly. If I was to pick a prop, it probably would be that Jacoby by decision, which is plus 200 currently. Uh, earlier in the week, it was plus 275. I liked it a lot more there, but uh, no bet for me on this first fight of the night, but I will pick Dustin Jacoby. Uh, next fight, we have Tagir Ulanbekov going against Tim Elliott. Um, Tim Elliott, very popular dog this week, and you know it's understandable. Tagir has not been you know too impressive thus far in the UFC, but Tagir is going to be the much younger fighter here. He's going to be the longer fighter. He's going to have a nice reach advantage as well, and I think he's pretty good. I mean, his wrestling's solid. His grappling's very solid. Was able to control his last opponent for nearly 13 minutes of a 15-minute fight, which was impressive to me. Um, Tim Elliott, you know, he's getting up there in age. He's now 35 years old, um, and then what I also noticed with Tim Elliott is he has been submitted a lot, five times. I feel like Ulan Bekov could potentially be live for a submission, but they're only giving us plus 300, which I don't think is worth it. I think the over uh, two and a half rounds is pretty solid. I think the fight goes to decision is pretty solid. I think outside of an Ulan Bekov submission, that's the only thing I'd worry about there. But I have no action on this fight as well. No action for me on these very two first fights of the night, but I will pick Ulan Bekov to win potentially by submission. I know some books do those, uh, um, the, the what's it called? The... Um, like where you can pick the two methods, a double chance. You pick the double chance, you can get the, say for Ulan Bekov, you want the submission or decision, maybe they'll give you a little bit better of a line than minus 210, but I think that's the way I'd look at it for this fight. Give me Ulan Bekov to win, and give me Ulan Bekov to win by either submission or decision. Uh, next, we had Devontae Smith going against Ludovic Klein, and yeah, this was a... Um, a spot I was eyeing all week. Me and Uncle Weezy were on Stat Diggers on Sunday, and usually they don't have the props out for Bet Online, DraftKings, you know, Fanduel, all that good stuff. Bovada, um, at that time, they just have the five dimes, and five dimes had the the fight doesn't go to decision at minus one sixty. And I was like, Weezy, if I could, if I had access to this line, I would be absolutely smashing it. And then the the next day comes, and I see money coming in on the fight goes to decision on five dimes. You know, the fight goes to decision. Where the fight doesn't go was like minus 130. Um, then it was minus 115. Then the fight doesn't go was minus 105. I was like, what's going on? This should literally be minus 300. And then I go on Bovada, and Bovada has the fight doesn't go to decision at plus 100. So at that point, I'm like, how much money should I put on this? I mean, this is a line that should be like minus 300. So I put I put two units on it. I thought that would be the, the responsible thing to do. Nothing is a certain 
in this game of MMA, but I really like this spot. Two units, fight doesn't go to decision, plus 100, and I would literally play it all the way to plus over to minus 200, and that's kind of where it's at now. Um, I saw FanDuel Sportsbook had like minus 197, something like that. Um, I don't hate that as well. I think this fight does finish inside the distance. We can take a look at the finish rates real quick, but in their combined 35 fights, only two have been to decision. Uh, Devontae Smith, a 100% finish rate in his wins and losses. The dude's chin is not good. He's been knocked out three times. Ludovic Klein coming in on short notice, a guy that already struggles with cardio, coming up a weight class as well. He's going to be the smaller fighter. Uh, Ludovic Klein, a finisher in his own right, 94%, finishing three of his four losses. I think this has violence written all over it. I think the fight doesn't go to decision line is still off. I think the under two and a half is good, um, and I see somebody getting finished here. I'm not confident in a pick. I think Devontae Smith's probably the more skilled fighter, but the chin is a huge concern, and Ludovic Klein is absolutely live to come out here and knock him out. But give me the fight doesn't go to decision. Two units on that, um, and I really do like that spot. Next, we have Umar Nurmagomedov going against Brian Kelleher. Nurmagomedov, uh, minus 850 at this point. I saw him minus 1,000 on a book. Brian Kelleher, plus 600. Um, I have the fight doesn't go to decision here as well. I have plus 111, and I have half a unit on it. Nurmagomedov, if you take a look at his entire career, you know not much of a finisher, but as of late, he has been finishing. We saw him finish Morozov in his debut. He hurt him bad on the feet, took him down. Ended up submitting him, and you know, we see that Brian Keller has been finished seven times, six coming by submission. I think there's a very good chance Nurmagomedov gets Brian Keller down, takes his back, and submits him. I mean, the dude's eight minus 850. I think he's a very good chance of finishing Brian Keller. If Keller was to pull off the upset, he's not winning by decision. He's going to submit or knock out Nurmagomedov, which I think is a huge stretch, but I think the fight doesn't go. Um, covers both angles there. So I see plus 100 out there, minus 110 on some books. I think the fight doesn't go as a solid way to play this. Um, I see some people taking shots on Umar inside the distance, which is plus 120. You might as well just play the fight doesn't go, pay a little bit extra, just in case Kelleher does you know, pull off the upset there. But give me fight doesn't go as well for this fight. Um, Maria Agapova, Marina Moroz, I do have a bet here as well. I have a half unit on Marina Moroz, plus 164. And yeah, I really like this spot. I've been talking about it all week. I think this is a very close fight. I think on the feet, it should be very close. I favor the, the volume of Moroz, but of course, you're going to have the power of Agapova. But I think a legit path to victory for Moroz here is getting this fight down to the mat. Uh, you know, Shanna Dobson took down Agapova um, in their fight, and that, that that's, a, that's a red flag because went back and watched it, and Dobson got a takedown with like in the first like minute of that fight. You know, if Shanna Dobson's taking you down, why can't Marina Moroz come out here and take down Agapova? When Moroz gets on top, I mean, her top control is phenomenal. And I also noticed that Moroz is fighting some very, very good competition. She submitted Joanne Calderwood in her very first UFC fight. You know, losses to Carla Esparza, Angela Hill. You know, she just beat Mara Bueno Silva, who I'm very high on as well. And that was two years ago. I think people kind of forgot how good Marina Moroz is. She's very good. And, you know, probably a lot of people don't even know who she is because, again, she's not fought in like two years because she keeps pulling out of fights. But, you know, luckily... Um, she's going to make it to this fight. I hope. I mean, it's it's Saturday at this point. She's going to make it to the fight, and I think it'll be close. you got the volume of Moroz, the ground game, the top control Moroz, and you have the power of Agapova. Moroz never been knocked out. They call her their Iron Lady for a reason. I don't think she gets knocked out here. I think this probably goes to decision. I think it's competitive, but give me the plus 164 on Moroz there, half a unit. The reason I want a half a unit, just to be honest with you guys, uh, whenever I'm really confident in women's MMA, I tend to look like a complete idiot a lot. So I, I kind of learned my lesson. Yes, I'm very confident that, that this line's off, but um, I've been burned so many times. But what I like about this spot is, you know, typically I'm getting burned by, you know, minus 200s in women's MMA. I'm getting burned by minus 160s, minus 130s. You know, what I like about this spot is I'm getting plus 164. So if I get burned here, you know, so be it. Half a unit, plus 164. Give me Moroz for the upset. Uh, Kennedy and Zichuklu going against Nikolai Negamarianu. No, thank you. I mean, if you bet on this fight, I don't know what to tell you. This fight is a, a mess. Um, the lowest level fight on the card by a mile. If Kennedy and Zuchuku, where his path to victory is literally getting his ass whooped for, you know, five and a half, six minutes, seven minutes, taking over as the fight goes on and getting a late finish. Um, it's hard to be confident in a guy where his path to victory is just to get his ass beat uh, up until his opponent gets tired from beating his ass. So I'm not betting this fight. I'm going to pick Kennedy to do just that. I think Nega Mariano is going to win the first round if you are alive better Probably a good live bet scenario. I, you know, Kennedy takes a, a while to start to get going in a fight. He's going to shell up instantly as soon as the fight starts. Mega Mariana is going to start throwing a ton of punches. I see him potentially slowing down. And when he does, you know, Zichuku is going to be able to take over, land a ton of volume. 
Negamariani with 29% strike in defense. And Zuchuku much bigger as well. It's just a mess of a fight. You can't be confident in this fight. Um, so yeah, passing here, I see people taking a shot on the over one and a half, and that makes sense. It's just I don't want to put any money on this fight whatsoever. Um, Rina Marigas, uh, Jan Jaunan. I like Rodriguez here. No bet for me. I feel like it's going to play outstanding. I don't see Jan Janan going for takedowns here. If she does, I don't really see her being successful. I just think, you know, it's simple as this. Rod Rodriguez is going to be the harder hitter. Rodriguez is going to be inflicting the damage, whereas Jan's more of a volume striker. Uh, she's going to, you know, strike with Rodriguez. She's not going to take her down, I don't think. Um, so it's going to play on the feet. It's probably going to go to decision as well. I favor the harder shots. You know, the damage of Rodriguez, she's a beast on the feet. Uh, but Jan's not bad at all. So I, I see why people took a shot on Jan Jaunan earlier in the week at a big plus number. But the money's came in on Jaunan at this point. Um, she is now plus 215. I saw she was like plus 240 earlier in the week. Uh, now plus 215. I, I get why people took a shot on it. It should be a close-ish fight. But I do like uh, Rodriguez here to inflict more damage and, and win the fight based off of damage there. Uh, Jalen Turner, Jamie Malarkey, the last fight until we get on this main card. And I do have a fight doesn't go to decision bet as well. And these uh, finish numbers are very similar to the uh, Devontae Smith finish number. So uh, we have Jalen Turner, 100% finish rate, 16 fights, never won by decision. And you can see why. This guy's dangerous anywhere the fight goes. You know, a knockout threat, tons of power in his hands, very long, very rangy. Uh, Jamie Malarkey, he's a, he's a walking punchy bag, very tough, but only a 45% striking defense. Uh, Jalen Turner, also a brown belt in BJJ, very slick on the mat, 27% of his wins by submission. It's finished his last two wins by submission as well. Jalen Turner's been finished in three of five losses, three coming by knockout. You know, the guy's chin's not not phenomenal. Uh, Jamie Malarkey, a 94% a finish rate, uh, only won one decision, 67% win by knockout, and then 27% submission rate as well. This guy's a finisher. Both guys are finishers. I think someone gets finished here. I'm picking Turner, but you know, give me the fight doesn't go at minus 200, two units on that. Um, I can see Turner finishing him early. That's personally what I'm picking. Turner, again, d dangerous anywhere the fight goes. If the fight hits the mat, I think Turner's live for a sub. I think Turner's live to knock out Malarkey early, but you know, Malarkey's uh, he's a dog. He's going to fight for your money. I see why people are taking the shot on him, but um, give me uh, the 6-3. 6-3 Jalen Turner. I mean, Jamie Malarkey's going from like a 5-9 Devontae Smith to a 6-3 Jalen Turner. I think Turner can definitely pose some problems and, and probably knock out Malarkey in that first round. But yeah, the fight doesn't go covers both sides i got it at minus 200 it has not moved much since then minus 210 um i would still play that line for sure so give me a fight doesn't go in that fight but that should be a very fun fight all right next we have uh greg hardy sergey spivak and i do like violence here as well i have the fight won't start round three minus 130 1.75 units and i also put a quarter unit on spivak to win in round three plus 1,000, just to kind of, you know, cover the whole fight. Obviously, it goes to the third round. I would favor Spivak at that point. I don't see Hardy winning in the third, uh, but I don't see this hitting round three. I think even like under one and a half, if you want to take a little bit more of a risk, is fine uh, because this is a fight where, first of all, we have two heavyweights that are finishers, but just stylistically, it's hard to see this fight going the distance. And on some books, they still have the fight doesn't go to decision around like minus 220, minus 230 around there. I think there's value on that line. Like it, this fight's gonna go one of two ways: either Hardy's going to knock out Sergey Spivak in that first round, or if Spivak gets this fight down to the mat in any fashion, in any round, first round, second round, or third round, if Spivak gets on top of Hardy, the fight's gonna be over. Hardy's ground game is horrendous. I will say his takedown defense is, is very impressive, but if Spivak can get this down one time, I think the fight's over. So I'm personally picking Greg Hardy. Um, kind of shocked at the love for Greg Hardy this week. I thought I'd be on like somewhat of an island here, but you know, Hardy, I think it was like plus 190 early in the week. He's now plus 160. So yeah, money came on Hardy, um, quite a bit all week. And I, I totally get it. This fight probably should be a pick -em. again, either Spivak gets him down and submits him or, you know, TKO or Hardy knocks him out on the feet. I'm going with Hardy by knockout, but give me the fight. Won't start round three minus 130, 1.75 units. And then also the Spivak to win in round three, quarter unit plus 1,000, just to cover all angles. I think the fight doesn't go to decisions good. I think the under two and a half is good. If you want to take a little more of a risk, I think the under one and a half is fine. Uh, moving on, we have Kevin Holland, Alex Oliveira, and I like Holland here quite a bit, and I was very tempted to bet him at minus 230 earlier in the week. I decided not to. I decided laying minus 230 on Holland probably isn't the best idea, but uh, I guess I should have because, man, the line moved a ton. But what I did do, though, was play Holland. Um, this is what I did. So, uh, Bet Online had 
Kevin Holland by knockout at plus 165. I took a 0.75 units and put it on that. And then FanDuel had Holland to win by submission plus 850. So I put a quarter unit on that. Um, I did that because it was more worth it to do that at the time than just play Holland inside the distance, which was around like minus 110, minus 120. Um, those lines are no longer available, at least the knockout props not. I think Holland by submission around plus 800 is still available. But what I would do now would be just play Holland inside the distance, minus 110. I see a minus 120. Um, if you want to sprinkle the sub, go for it. I think the sub is a very sneaky prop. Oliveira's been submitted six times. Holland is a black belt in BJJ. I think the sub's on the table. I'm personally picking Holland to win by knockout, but um, yeah, that's what I did. 0.75 units on that KO, plus 165 quarter unit on the sub, plus 850. Um, but at this point, I probably just take Holland inside the distance around minus 120, minus 110. I think Holland finishes Oliveira. I think Oliveira you know, is on his way out. I mean, on a three fight skid. And typically, we're always talking about like which Oliveira is going to show up. It's, it's been the bad Oliveira the last couple fights, and I don't think that's changing here. So I, I think Holland wins this fight inside the distance. I'd rather play the, the like the minus 110, minus 120 inside the distance than lay minus 335 on Kevin Holland. Uh, Bryce Mitchell, Edson Barbosa. Uh, in my opinion, this is the toughest fight to call because you have you know good arguments for both sides. You have Bryce Mitchell, who is young. You know, the skies look so impressive. But this is going to be a massive step up in competition. Absolute massive step up in competition. And I thought I'd be picking Barbosa. I really did. I thought I'd be picking him. I thought I'd be betting him. But just watching Bryce Mitchell, I mean, I like I like what he does in there. I mean, he go, he's going to go for a takedown within the first 30 seconds. This guy's fight IQ is good. His takedowns are good. His control is good. Um, I really like what I see from Bryce Mitchell. I just can't bet him. Minus 150 here. I really can't do it against Edson Barbosa, who's fought the much better competition. And it's really not even close at all. Not even close. So... I get why people are taking the dog shot on Barbosa. I really do. It, it makes sense, but um, I'm going to pick Mitchell to win. I just can't lay minus 150 on it. So uh, I'll take Mitchell. Uh, if I was to look at a prop, I don't even know. I mean, maybe maybe Mitchell by decision plus 235, but even then, I just don't want to put money on this fight. I think it's a great fight. I think it's one of my favorite fights on the card. It's just I don't feel comfortable laying minus 150 against uh, the veteran in Edson Barbosa here, but I will pick Mitchell. I will pick Mitchell to win. All right. Now we have Rafael Dazon just going against Hoinato Moicano. And yeah, this is a spot where I was checking the odds and I saw five dimes had the fight doesn't go to decision at plus 120 for a while, for like a couple hours. I was like, do, do they know that this fight's five rounds? Do they know that, you know, Moicano's coming in here on four days notice, you know, had 19 and a half hours of travel to do, had to cut over 20 pounds in a couple days. Do they know all that stuff? I was like, why is the fight doesn't go to decision at plus 120 on five dimes? And then Bet Online puts out the under four and a half rounds at plus 145. So I, I hopped on that. Uh, the line moved uh, like instantly, really. And it was now, it was then like plus 125. And then it went to like plus 100. And now the under there is like minus 120. But I do see that FanDuel Sportsbook has the fight doesn't go to decision around minus 112. I love that spot. If you have access to FanDuel Sportsbook, uh, minus 112 for the fight doesn't go to decision. I really like that spot. So, yeah, I like the fight doesn't go. I like the under four and a half. Um, yeah, I, I like violence in this spot. And the reason being is because of the narrative in this fight. The big narrative is, and there's a couple. Uh, the big one, though, is Moicano, short notice, just fought, what, a couple weeks ago, having to cut weight two times in a few weeks. Um, you know, 19 and a half hours of travel, they said. Uh, having to cut over 20 pounds and you know, RDA training for a five-round fight. Moicano has not been to the third round in eight fights. He has not been to a third round since the Calvin Cater fight, which was like eight or nine fights ago. Moicano, I, I question the gas tank. I really do. He's never been in a five-round fight where RDA has been in a ton of five-round fights. So um, Moicano, I, I like this guy. He's good. Kind of a killer-be-killed fighter. He's been finishing all four of his losses. But there's just a lot going against Moicano in this fight. So I like RDA, and I was actually tempted to bet RDA, and maybe maybe I, I still might. If, if RDA's line comes down to, like, minus 150, yeah, I'm going to probably bet that. But it's now minus 180 at this point. Um, and I don't really get the love for Moicano. I mean, if this was a you know full camp for Moicano, if this was a fight that he was preparing for a five-round fight, you know, um, was not short notice. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd get the, the love for my condo at, at plus 155, plus 145. I, I'd get that, but just so much is stacked up against Moicano here. So I like RDA. 
I like RDA to win. I have one unit on the under four and a half rounds, plus 145. I love the fight doesn't go to decision on FanDuel minus 112. I was actually tempted to you know add on to that as well. Um, I like the fight doesn't go the under four and a half. Uh, maybe like the fight won't start round five. Uh, I just don't see this getting extended. I don't hate the RDA, you know, three, four, five sprinkles. Um, I just think he's going to break Moicano. I think he's going to use his pressure, his pace, his crazy pace that he brings, you know, mix and takedowns and just break a guy that is coming in on extremely short notice. So um, give me the under four and a half in that fight. Uh, next, we have the main event, Colby Covington, Hori Masvidal. And I'll, I'll, I'll keep this simple. I'm not going to get into any narratives here. Um, we know they both don't like each other, but Colby Covington, minus 350. Um, I feel like, you know, the, the way I'm playing this, I, I like it. So I have Colby Covington to win in rounds four or five or by decision, minus 160, 1.75 units on FanDuel. I think that line's still there, um, but you're taking a minus 350 Colby Covington and, you know, getting minus 160. I can, I can tell you now, Colby Covington, there's not a great chance he finishes Masvidal early. And, you know, personally, I don't think he finishes Masvidal at all. Uh, I think if you want to, you know, be a little more riskier, take the Covington decision minus 115. Um, but for me, I feel more comfortable getting that that round five, that round four, just in case there is a, a late finish because I still have nightmares from my decision prop with Colby against Tyron Woodley. And maybe, you know, Masvidal slows down to the point where Colby can get him out of there late. But yeah, four or five or by decision, minus 160, Fandle Sportsbook, 1.75 units. And what I also did was put a quarter unit on Colby Covington, round three, plus 1,400. So I'm covering round three, round four, round five, and decision. And uh, I'm not laying the minus 350. So I, I do like that. If, if Colby finishes him early, I'd be shocked, but, you know, so be it. Um, if Masvidal finishes Colby early, in which it, it could happen. If, if Masvidal wins, it's going to be early. If you like Masvidal, I'd, I'd bet the knockout at plus 400. Um, but I think the most likely scenario is that Colby Covington decision, but I do have that 3-4-5 in decision um, all covered there, and I do like that. So I'll quickly go over my bets. Um, you know, a lot of line movement on this week. So um, Marina Morose, plus 164, half a unit. Devontae Smith, Ludovic Klein, fight doesn't go, plus 100, two units. I still like it at minus 200. Uh, Hardy Spivak, fight won't start round three, minus 130, 1.75 units. Spivak to win in round three, plus 1,000, 0 0.25 units. Uh, Holland by KO, plus 165, 0.75 units. Holland by submission, plus 850, quarter unit. Um, I At this point, I'd play the, the inside the distance for Holland at round minus 110. Uh, Moicano, Dos Anjos, under four and a half rounds, plus 145, one unit. I would play the, uh, at this point, I'd play the fight doesn't go to decision on Fandle, minus 112. Uh, Kelleher, Nurmagomedov, fight doesn't go to decision, plus 111, half a unit. Uh, Covington, or uh, Masvidal, my bad. Uh, Co Colby Covington to win in round 4, 5, or by decision, minus 160, 1.75 units. Covington to win in round 3, plus 1,400, quarter unit. And then Jamie Malarkey, Jalen Turner, fight doesn't go to decision, minus 200, two units on that. I'm feeling pretty good about this week. Lots of violence bets. Only one straight bet. Um, kind of a tough card in terms of like picking winners, I guess you could say. A lot of really close fights that can go either way. A lot of very sketchy favorites, I'd say as well. But um, feeling pretty good and hopefully we make some money. And again, enjoy the fights. That's always most important. And, you know, second most important is making some money. And that's what I do plan to do for this week. Uh, be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, make sure to check out DFSbythenumbers.com. So um, I usually do all my bets. This week I, I got all my bets in by Wednesday, which was awesome. Um, and so check that out. You get all my bets, all my extra content. You know, I do a full card article and best bet article as well. Um, you know, more articles throughout the week, um, betting breakdown video. So check out DFSbythenumbers.com and sign up today. So that's about it. Best of luck. Let us make some money for UFC 272. See you guys.